right, beer time. Beer 30, everybody. Beer 30. It's happy hour on the water. All right. Hello, Dennis and Ann here once again for another week's video of GTFO plan. People have asked what we do on the boat besides... <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no. What we do when there's no wind. Uh, yeah. But we still like to go out on the boat. Uh, so if it's really bad wind, what we'll do is more than likely we'll just stay in the marina and do some work on the boat. But if there's enough wind to go out for a sail, but then the wind's gonna die off, and next thing you know, you're just putting along every two knots, it doesn't really matter. There's typically two things that we'll do. I mean, just go anchor somewhere and jump off the back and have some fun. Or we'll go fishing, which we totally suck at, but... We still haven't caught a fish. <laughs> But another thing that we did, my daughter came with her two friends. We were moving at one to two knots. They went off the back end and went surfing, hanging yeah. onto ropes and the ring with the rope and yeah, playing around. Yeah, a couple lines off the back. And yeah, and going between the lines. Yeah. They thought it was the best thing ever. And then yeah. the adults just hung out in the cockpit. Yeah, watched them and you know, <laughs> made faces and called yeah. the names. One last one. Do you have any more fruit? Ah! Uh, oh, oh, oh awesome. You like my glasses? I do. They're very lovely. That's what happens when you forget your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use what's there. That's right. And sometimes you look cool, sometimes you look like Elton John. <laughs> I think there's plenty of things. You're never at a loss for things to do in the water, and you're certainly not at a loss for things in the boat. Yeah, absolutely. So where we talked about retiring early, we have multiple tabs on our spreadsheet, and one of them is our timeline. Having a house and all your items, to get rid of every single thing just about that you own and downsize everything. For me, being military, <laughs> I tend to be very minimalist. It's and a lifestyle and a lifetime. I grew up as an army brat. So you get used to downsizing or scaling back and just getting rid of things. So for me, I, I'm comfortable with a lot of that stuff. Go for I grew up military, <laughs> however, in this house, I've been here 21 yeah. years. Even though I'm not a cluttery person, there's a lot of pockets yeah. of crap in this house. Yeah. Stuff accumulates, you know. Mm -hmm. so with our timeline, is starting to downsize. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. amazing how much stuff right. you can have packed away. Right, and during the off season, pick a room, or pick a weekend where it's bad weather, or you've got nothing planned, and, and just pick a room yeah start thinking about what do you really want, what do you really need. For example, I went through my closet. Right. Right. I didn't really think I had a lot of stuff in my closet and I did that practice where you take every single thing out of your closet, put it on your bed, so you have to go to bed at night, so you have to finish the project, and piles, what you love, maybes, donate, and trash. Yeah. And like I got, a Marie Kondo, yeah. what gives you joy. <laughs> And I got rid of like 20 garbage bags full of clothes and shoes. I found a pair of shoes I didn't even know I had. That's how much stuff was kind of crammed into the nooks and crannies <laughs> of the closet. You like my new shoes? <laughs> They're 20 years old. And I, it, it feels now like I have more clothes than I did before because everything in my closet I wear. Because there were things in there I literally had worn for over a decade. Yeah. Because when we go to sell, we need to stage the house. So there's big ticket right. items as we get closer, about six months out, we'll get rid of some big items out of the house, we can stage the house. So some of the other things that we have on our timeline, besides the massive project of decluttering, and also getting the house ready, we're you know, painting rooms, trim, you know, fixing things. When we get to the end, we're not having to pay someone got the money to get the house perfect. Yeah, that's ready. a great point because landscaping, you know, the curb appeal, that's a big thing in selling a house. Yeah, we got But it takes a while for a yard to grow in, whether it's your grass or your shrubbery. You want to start those now. Also, some of the things that we are doing, uh, including, drum roll, end of September, we are going to crew on hull number one of the Neal. But it's a 50 foot Neal trimaran because we need to build our sailing resume because we're going to go from a 30 foot monohull to a 51 foot trimaran. Right. Insurance companies are never going to let us do that. And we'd have to pay a captain. Rather than yeah. putting money toward a captain, we would rather take time, you know, out of our vacations and crew on boats. So our goal is to kind right. of do two weeks a year right. crewing on Neal trimarans. 
when we went to Cruisers University, there was an insurance representative, and she's awesome. And one of the great pieces of information and advice that she gave us was, it's awesome that you guys have your own 30-foot monohull and get all the experience you want on it. However, you know, if you're looking to get a 51-foot trimaran, you need make, model, similar type sailboat experience. Yeah, it's too in, big of in a order, jump. It's too big of a jump. With the Neil 51, which we love, so that community is building, and we've already been in contact with about four or five people that have one, and a handful have already said, you know, hey, come join us, yeah. come sail with us. Um, some of the other things that we want to do on our timeline is taking some training classes. We want to do some medical mm -hmm. training classes, maybe some offshore safety at sea. There's that class where they throw you in the water with your clothes right. in a life raft, yeah. and you have to figure out your way, and you learn how to do that. Yeah, uh, some of the other classes we talked about, diesel mechanic engine certification. Another timeline thing that we really have to keep in mind are reserving that boat that you know you're going to buy at a certain end date if you're going to buy new. So those are some of the additional thoughts that we have in terms of developing a timeline, getting your house ready to sell, yeah. the GTFO. And what we're doing, we're not saying it is the one and only way, no. we're just sharing with you kind of our timeline, our thinking, but we would love it if you would comment down below and tell us some of your ideas and some of the things you've done. A, one, have a plan. And then two, how are you gonna get there? You yeah. have to have a plan. Yeah. Don't know how to get there, but yeah. that's the key piece. Yeah. We have a great plan. Yep. That was so good. <laughs> Scaring a cat out of the litter box because it's, no. we're making a video, it's more important than a cat taking a dump. Barnacles on the on the prop, barnacles underneath, barnacles on the rudder. But the zinc felt good. Yeah, um, and then there was nothing on the blade or nothing on the prop shaft, so. Oh, that's good. But the coolest thing was I could hear the music. <laughs>